back from... What is that thing? Some sort of creature, I don't know its intentions. Don't move. Its vision might be based on plot convenience. Well, I'll be right back. Don't leave me right now! Nope! Dude, come back! Oh. Ah. This is my child, I've adopted him, and if anyone touches him, I'll go feral! Back in Titans Returns, after Fortress Maximus needed someone to face off, a poll was created in the fan vote for the follow-up Titan Class toy. The choices were shown, and the public selected Trypticon, which, if you haven't figured out, was the right choice. Trypticon is based around his original Generation 1 appearance, but features new gimmicks to work along the mainline gimmick he was released in. This destructive beast only knows to hate, crushing everything in his path. Working with the Decepticons, he's pretty much a tool, and that's all he is. I want to send a massive thanks to the YouTube channel The Dabber Supreme for providing this figure in full. Please check them out when you're able. To work with the gimmick, the set comes with the Titan Master Necro, who, if you look, bears a similar resemblance to Tailgate. That's because his design, under the name Wipeout, is heavily inspired by the Tailgate design in comic form. There was even an RTS Windcharger repaint, who was the only other physical representation. Two tones of purple for the body with a black head. Fold it up and it turns into a head shaped like a Constructicon, mostly purple with a silver crest and red visor. Pretty simple, but this is a Titan Master. Same articulation, same pegs, same connections, same everything! Open up the cockpit, sit him inside, tilt the head back, and close it up so he can drive the included figure. The set also comes with full tilt, inspired by the actual other figure included with the original toy. Fully decked out in purple with black tires. You can add stickers, but if you know me, I didn't add them. Certainly adds to the fun of Trypticon, but by himself he feels a little bland. All the stickers would do is add little touches. So even though there's an impressive molded engine, dome-shaped canopy, and just a hint of grey, it all sort of blends together. It doesn't help that nothing sticks out, so it all looks like a brick with discs. Few Titan ports on the side, and a porthole on top to add the accessory included. Which, I think weapons slapped on a car is weird, but I'll make the exception with a bland purple space car. Although, the front does look a little tumblery, so it's gotta be good. Full Tilt is likely just here to play with Trypticon, but I think they did alright. Molding is an improvement, it just needs more paint, especially when a lot of it needs help to present itself. But it does alright. Robot mode. <laughs> in robot mode is kind of basic, but there's a few good tricks with him. Honestly, with the color, he almost looks like a shadow in a comic. There's a strong bad guy presence, even if he does look like a shadow purple Constructicon. Some things to note, no feet. Stands alright, despite no ability to wear sneakers. Remember to fold up the panels behind the legs. With the back folded down, the canopy sometimes opens freely if you mess with it. Also, you can flip down the crotch plate, plug in the gun, and now it's armor! But why hide that wonderful chest detail? Did someone say, ARTICULATION! Ball jointed head, shoulders up and down, ball joint, rotation below, elbow bent, hips out and in forward to back, rotation below, and knee bent. Posability is basic, but the lack of any feet might make it a struggle to stand on the main figure. Those are the smallest pinky toes I've ever seen. But, he's got a hole in the back, much like the Siege figures. Let's take a look at the accessories. He comes with a thin two-barrel gun. Feels like a toy jet, maybe the U-Wing, with the cockpit and wings. Simple, but looks nice. Honestly, he doesn't need much when he's got something else's backup. Well, full tilt, you're okay, but let's get to what we're here for. That is, if you haven't skipped the video. Mechagodzilla transforms into a large spaceship, and I do mean large. This is similar to his battle station form he originally had, but instead the legs collapse and tab into the body for a more solid looking piece. I say solid, but if you lift it up, certain things tend to shift around. Not the most secure, but it holds fine for its size. Besides, I don't think I'm going to swoosh it around like a TIE Fighter. It's just so large that you might see my backdrop isn't big enough to fit. 
And this isn't even as big as it gets. I just can't get enough of the size of this thing flying around. It's so intimidating, especially when you notice the transparent plastic that's meant to represent the eyes facing back at you, staring down as you cry and pee your pants, until you laugh at the ape-faced chunky body with small wing syndrome. It's the thing. It's weird. If that's the head, then it's right below the robot mode taint. Look at the detail of this thing. It doesn't feel lacking. So much texture within. Even the clear top has some line work to it. It is smooth for a reason. I do need to make a point. You can take full tilt, open the front, and drive him in like he's somehow piloting the ship. Or you can lock him on top between these large cannons. There's also the nostril turret, the most well-crafted turret known to civilization. And I guess the purple struts could be intakes or more turrets. Need more? There's multiple 5mm ports to connect additional accessories. Just keep in mind the screw holes that can and will likely fool you. You may notice the head and arms on the back, but the eyes try to hide behind the gray struts. I guess this fire breath is supposed to be rockets. You can not deploy the turret, but with that, are we gonna let this take away from the sheer mass of this? I'm fabulous! Rolls really well. Good when you need to move it. And there's a ton of Titan Master ports to do some early Fall of Cybertron gameplay. Put this next to Fortress Maximus so they can duel in combat. I can't believe how well this alt mode is. Seems to hold better than expected. But of course, this is just one of his alt modes. If this scratches that itch of what you're looking for, oh, wait for it because we've got something even better. Ladies and gentlemen, this this is, um, mode. It was in the manga. This disproves evolution. When they announced this figure, this is what I was excited for. Dinosaur also transforms into a large city base, and I can't be the only one who was impressed. With the mass spread out as such, there's an intense gravitation to play given how cool and intimidating the set is. It can make a grown man cry. Did I mention this was sent by the Dabber Supreme? Please follow them. Please do it. I'm not trying to overpromote, but look at what they did for me. Do it! Follow them! Ah! This thing is gigantic! A lot better than just opening up the legs and flipping out a few things like a certain other large figure. Pop quiz. Who was given the more effort? Is it Trypticon? The answer's Trypticon. That's because this set was built from the ground up, and they could go full out on the intended integrated gimmicks. So many Titan Master ports and weapon portholes to add in this openly expansive portrait. There's even a few places to attach other ramp bases. Should have had a few more, but with the ramps on the front, it goes straight to the ground, so figures drive up with ease. Speaking of portholes and ramps, just a few years later and the set is complete with Brunt. In tank mode, he could defend the base. In robot mode, he could walk casually or command the city. But of course, you can disconnect him, and that feels... That feels right. Brunt is out of a job, however, with this long connection system locking full tilt to make a tower. Something Brunt originally did. You can not work around it by folding it down and using the porthole, you could build something on it. You could take full tilt off completely and still have the tower, but it's just not the same. In robot mode, he can also command the city, but in alt mode, you can do some sweet initial de-drifting. Or use the long ramp for free rolling, and let me tell you, this is probably the most satisfying part of the entire thing. I've wanted some launching feature for the larger mainline figures, and while it could do with a button to give it a little boost, this is wicked fun. You don't even have to use full tilt, take another figure with wheels, and as long as they fit between, you can make a most satisfying compilation video. Damn, full tilt looks so small, that's not a complaint. I wish these where they balconies would lock into place, but luckily there's Titan ports and portholes to keep things locked in. There's also a doorway going from one side to the other. I love when they link up components to get from one place to another. Can't say the same about the legs. Glad it's got stilts to keep the legs up, and I love how it expands the entire thing. It fortifies the city by creating a large wall, making the set intimidating by sheer size. I also love the texturing, especially at the endpoints that look like either stadiums or something energy related. The issue is that it becomes a balancing act. Not only does it take up a lot of space, but the ends here can collapse to the ground. So the use of Titan ports, portholes, and the bottom of the foot used as a landing pad is a real help. Even the wings have Titan ports, which cover some greebling of the leg. Even then, I can't complain too much. There's still so much space to do whatever you want. Look 
look at the flooring here. So much open space. It's exactly what I want for a base figure that opens itself for play value. Creating an environment to start your investment. Titan Masters are just so small, it makes the whole thing look that much bigger. But if you want figures with a little more, the Siege Bowmasters and Micromasters feel really welcoming. If they can fit through the damn door. These cannons extend as possible defenses, but you don't have to use them as towers if you want. They still fold down. It's just another thing that makes Trypticon, ignore the back, that much more perfect. See, I'm not just some business person trying to sell you something. In fact, I'm not that at all, not sponsored. But if that hasn't gotten you interested, I don't know what will. Look at the details inside the wall. There's a pure attention to making this stand out while respecting the original. This base gives you so much play value. Bringing in other figures feels like the intention. But even without that, the stance of it all is wonderful. If you've always wanted to get a modern version of this base form, it doesn't disappoint. Robot mode. <laughs> in robot mode or beast mode whatever you want to call it looks amazing simply because this is very clearly Trypticon hell you can minimize an image of this and I wouldn't be able to tell if this was the old toy without a good glance at the updated texturing and detail that's called updating and respecting your roots I'm sure some of you wanted a war for Cybertron version the game of course really noticing Hasbro's running out of titles anyways yes that thing looks powerful, but this is Trypticon. This is precious, and you're gonna take it, and you're gonna like it. Did the guy in the comments have enough fit over the lack of stickers? There's already some impressive detail, with his massiveness allowing a huge landscape of mechanics. But if you really need it, despite being my figure, let's add the stickers. <laughs> Satisfied? Now this is going to be the hard part of the review. As beautiful as this beast is, competing for my affection against Baby Yoda, let's talk about... Problems. Feels gross saying that. This issue is infamous, but allow me to elaborate for those who don't know. Some copies of this figure have had the hip joints forward and back completely explode on them. Mine hasn't, and there's a way to check codes to see if yours is potentially fine, but not guaranteed. If not, there are fixes out there, so it's something to look up. I've also heard similar problems with the tail that locks in. I can feel what they mean when I dislocate the locking feature, but I haven't heard too many issues with that. With that out of the way, here's some things that are probably not issues, just stuff to be aware of. Number one is accidentally falling in love with him. It counts. When you collapse the leg, you'll see a ton of 5mm ports that hold it together. Don't start plugging them from the top. Plug them near the foot, going up to the hip. It helps line up everything, not just the pegs, but the upper leg joint. Don't forget the trigger button here that locks the panel and hip that swings out. And when closing the legs, make sure this connector doesn't slip into the leg like a raccoon in the garage. Another transformation tip, when the head's folded back, going into robot mode, flip the head down, then rotate. The head fits into a gap inside, and if you don't do it in that order, you could destroy the head and bring shame upon everyone. You hurt this little boy, what's wrong with you? Listen, I know there's similarities to Towards Godzilla, we know this, but does Godzilla have cannons that flip around? Does Godzilla have scales with wheels? Does Godzilla have a locking mechanism so you can bring full tilt and lock him in? I didn't think so. Can we just bring up the head? So iconic to the original figure, but you can see an added level of detail that exceeds my expectation. Nice transparent eyes and gunner inside the jaw with pegs to add a titan figure. Wish the jaw could close fully, but I'm not gonna worry about it. Did someone say, ARTICULATION! 
Head up and down, jaw, it can rotate, but the towers get in the way. Shoulders out and in, forward and back, elbow, wrist tilt, fingers and thumb moves, hips out and in, forward to back, knee bend, foot tilt, and tail can swing out. Posability is okay if the joints weren't a huge risk. I usually have to swing the hips a little back and then forward to move it. Foot tilt is super tight, but what I like about the tail is that it locks in two places. It takes a while, but you don't have to use it as a third leg to balance him. It's good he has transparent hips. You can see the inner mechanisms, so if it explodes, you can examine the damage. I can't tell if that's smart. As expected, there is no walking gimmick, so I guess these purple sticks are just there now. Honestly, I'm good without it. I'm sure walking ever so slowly until the mechanisms stop altogether is fun for the whole family, but in Generations, I expect a certain level of posability, which he has, if you dare. But, if it walks like a Trypticon... Well, I mean, it doesn't because it doesn't have the mechanisms, but it looks like it. He doesn't have any accessories outside of Full Tilt, which looks wonderful next to him. So let's take a look at the gimmick starting at the head. We mentioned the turrets in the mouth, but you could take Necro or other Titan Masters, plug it on top, and deploy the Unicorn Horn with a bonus cannon. You honestly don't need the Titan Master for this. You could just use your finger and push it. Hmm, a figure where the gimmick doesn't require a specific piece. Good choice, not Primus. Honestly, this is fun to fold down and spring open. Would be nice to have blast effects for the fire breath. Uh, correction, would be nice if it could work with blast effects. You may have noticed that he also has a functioning throat. Yep, he could vor- I mean, swallow Titan Masters. Then you can swing up the full tilt connection and open his stomach cage to release them. Inside has two shelves, which, from what I know, fits more than 60 Titan Masters. No wonder he's the face of a fake cereal. He could consume so many of them. I think he's coming out with the Food Channel. While we're here, I did hear issues about the hinges not locked locking in, but mine works fine. Also, you could take out the entire connection system, but now it's too smooth and flat. With the transparent green plastic, it looks like a skyscraper. He may not be as tall as Fortress Maximus, even extending him to how tall he can get. And to make things worse, I don't think he could beat him in an arm wrestling match. However, he's still intimidating, being a dinosaur after all. And with the girthy tail, he's big where it counts. Oh. They could even fight! With Tiny Star Wars ships in their hand. Now this is where it gets exciting, bringing in other figures to command or take on the behemoth. Titan Master figures can't even comprehend the size. You can bring in normal figures including Megatron or Galvatron to command it, have it take on Optimus Prime and the Autobots in battle. Bring in Battlemasters, Micromasters, Minibots to do the whole G1 episode, Hot Wheels, Lego, just call the number on screen. And if you order now, Jackie Chan will give you a thumbs up. There's portholes in places so you can add Brunt wherever suits it, and you can still add the Titan Masters with the small ports. Highlights are one on each hip, a few on the sides of the head near the skull rockets, and one on the back like he's riding it. Giddy up, little big doggy. I can't help but feel if video games taught me anything, there's probably a baby in his throat. You know, I'm just trying to understand what the minibots were thinking. How could you even think to take this on? You could probably just ask politely, but nobody ever thinks of that. Do you remember in G1 where this was Starscream for a bit? Do you remember in Prime Wars where this was Starscream for a bit? Thanks, I hate it. I want to praise this more than I already do. The level of engineering and the look of this thing that straight up Trypticon is nothing to ignore. I certainly enjoy this, on the shelf or just holding the figure, but the issues and worries make me back away, and it feels like I should have more fun with it. I don't hold a grudge to Trypticon, there's so much here that I've wanted from the guy, and I'm wildly impressed with how he came out. I know some people got him for a discount, but if you can get him for over that price, I don't think it'll matter because this is a figure I think you should try. I absolutely love it. Huge thanks to the Dabber Supreme. Please go over and support their content. Don't confuse it with the animated film about dinosaurs in the city. Did you forget about me?